God move. We are met we are together meeting. We are blessed. Peace in coming and in going. Peace in labor and in rest. We are met we Hold on, dear brother. Hold on.
please rise. Let us rejoice. Today, we thank the divine for allowing us to gather today amongst friends, family, teachers past and present, together in a moment that has been 14 years in the making. We thank you for helping us distinguish ourselves, not just as the class of 2022, but as future authors, scientists, business owners, all destined for great things you have written in the stars of our own individual skies. As we commence this ceremony, we ask that you let us leave our hardships in the past and allow us to stay in this present moment and help us prepare for our futures, which once seemed so far, but is now approaching us so soon. To the divine, I ask, as this new chapter opens, you keep us safe and secure. See to it that we are loved and cherished, and most importantly, celebrated for our achievements today. Alleluia. You may now be seated. Mr. Atkinson, Mrs. Briggs, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, family and friends, and my fellow graduating classmates. Welcome to the most special ceremony at Westchester, graduation. So much has led us all up to this point today, and we should all be very proud of how far we have come. We couldn't have asked for better years than those we spent at Westchester, surrounded by the most caring and loving faculty, along with the best students and friends. Thank you to all of the Westchester community for supporting us all along the way. We couldn't have done it without you. We have lots of special moments in store for today. We will hear from our valedictorian, our salutatorians, and many faculty members. We will all probably laugh a lot listening to stories about each other and maybe cry even more. I hope everyone enjoys this celebration of the class of 2022 and how we have made it to this day. Let's start celebrating each other and how special we all are. Good morning. Each year, the senior class comes together to thoughtfully plan a gift for the school. Our class has decided to gift two benches in honor of three members of the Westchester community who passed this year. Miss T, or Miss Thompson, as many people knew her, was one of the most influential persons in the lower school, and many students in our class cherish her moments. She was selfless and spent her time at Westchester making others happier with her actions. One senior stated, Miss T was always there and willing to help out. She definitely made my lower school experience better due to both her personality and her passion. Along with Miss T, we will also be remembering Morgan and Kayla Kushner, twin sisters from the class of 2015. Morgan and Kayla left a lasting impact on all who met them. A close friend of theirs shared this quote about the two, saying, Kayla and Morgan were two individual pieces of a beautiful shared spirit. Their quiet, fierce loyalty to the people they loved was paired with a kind and welcoming warmth to those who didn't know them as well. Their light shone on all who met them. It is clear that Miss T, Morgan, and Kayla created a better school community during their time at Westchester, and our class hopes to honor their lives with our senior gift. The first salutatorian of the class of 2022 is Sydney Briggs. Sydney is the 2021 recipient of the Peters Family Scholarship and the 2022 recipient of the Mandarin Award. Active in Westchester's debate, mock trial, and model UN clubs, she was selected as our DAR Good Citizen. 
Sydney will attend Wellesley College as a collegiate rower. Congratulations, Sydney. We can clap for her. The second salutatorian of the class of 2022 is Charlotte Martin. Charlotte is a highly accomplished, superior rated pianist while also contributing significantly to Westchester's mock trial, Model UN, and varsity golf programs. Additionally, she's been a passionate volunteer for Kisses for Kate. Charlotte will attend Vanderbilt University in the fall. Congratulations, Charlotte. The third salutatorian of the class of 2022 is Katie Todd. Katie is the 2021 recipient of the Spanish Award and the 2022 recipient of a Mathematics Certificate of Merit. A talented vocalist, she's been a valuable participant in Westchester's theater program, while also devoting her time to student government and Odyssey of the Mind. Katie will be a student in the Honors College at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in the fall. Congratulations, Katie. The valedictorian of the class of 2022 is Sophia Singer. Sophia is the recipient of the 2022 Mathematics Award, as well as being the 2022 Female Scholar Athlete of the Year. She's been a valuable leader on the varsity cross country, cheerleading and track teams, in addition to participating in Odyssey of the Mind and volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club. Sophia will attend Duke University in the fall as a Trinity Scholar. Congratulations, Sophia. The Peter M. Cowan Outstanding Senior Award was named in 2003 as a special recognition for Mr. Peter M. Cowan, who served as head of school from 1991 to 2003. The intent of the Board of Trustees was to recognize with this award Mr. Cowan's great affection for Westchester students. This award is given to a senior selected by the faculty as best portraying the qualities of character, integrity, citizenship, leadership, and scholarship. This year's recipient of the Peter M. Cowan Outstanding Senior Award is Sophia Singer. We will now hear from our salutatorians and valedictorian. This time last year, I was trying to convince myself that the graduation of the class of 2021 wasn't happening. This time last year, I was trying to stop time. This time last year, I was not willing to believe the fact that my classmates and I were about to be seniors, yet here we are. I walked into Westchester for the first time eight years ago to Mrs. Sloop's classroom. Contrary to popular belief, I am not a lifer and was honestly nervous to enter into a new school. Would they be nice to me? Would they think I was dumb? However, I quickly learned that all of my fears were unnecessary. These are some of the kindest, smartest, most talented people I have ever met, and I'm honored to be surrounded every day by these 33 amazing classmates. Today I want to celebrate how far this class of 2022 has come, but also how similar we are to the wide-eyed fifth graders that I met on my first day of school. It's surprising because in the words of Robert Frost, nature's first green is gold, her heart is two to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down today, nothing gold can stay. But I'm going to have to argue with Mr. Frost. Our class is an anomaly. Something gold can stay, and that gold is the good nature of our class. 
A never faltering goal is our intellectual prowess. In fifth grade, we worked hard to memorize our sections of the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere and research our Frank Lloyd Wright House. We have carried this through our careers at Westchester, even through a pandemic that created a before and after in our lives. Zoom conversations about Frankenstein and memorizing trig identities show the resilience of our grade. As senioritis struck, we still discussed The Handmaid's Tale and even analyzed how the effects of World War II have drifted into the current Russia-Ukraine conflict. It is easy to say that our class is continually motivated and curious. So I would like to acknowledge something. I am one of three salutatorians for our grade, but I believe that each person in our class is worthy of this kind of recognition. Classmates, each of us has something special, even if we weren't named with a fancy title. To the younger kids listening, titles are not the be-all, end-all in life. Your GPA does not define you, especially not in relation to others. And I just want to point out how academically talented each person in this grade is. Our never-faltering goal is also our excitement at sports. For years, we have filled stadiums, pools, tracks, and selfishly, boats. The determination of students trying out for the sixth grade volleyball team continues with the same final golf swing. I remember fondly our paint war at Camp Seafair our freshman year. In English class after this trip, Mrs. Albert taught us about how images can capture emotion by displaying a picture of us huddled together around a paint-covered Duncan as a display of pure joy. I agree. We thrive in sports environments and have fun together. A never-faltering goal is our creativity. This year, we have created some of the most intricate parking spots imaginable, and I have loved seeing a physical representation of our individuality every day while I inevitably have to fix my parking. Beyond visual art, our class is extremely talented in theater, from Greece to The Little Mermaid. Outside of plays, the voice girls have serenaded us for years, and Mr. Mickey's band will always bring us joy. Even in more casual settings, I remember our grade pre-COVID literally just singing, in between classes, even in classrooms. One year it was Country Roads. One year it was I Want It That Way. Sometimes it's Justin Bieber's Little Drummer Boy. I even remember walking down from a math class singing on my own from Les Miserables with my classmates. I hope our harmonies resonate forever to continue to illuminate the joy of our class. So yes, our gold is never faltering. Academically, athletically, musically, our exteriors may have changed, but our interiors have stayed true to the wide-eyed, welcoming fifth graders I met on my first day. Teachers and faculty, thank you for helping us keep this gold through our curiosity. Parents and friends, you are the reason why we are here. Class of 2022, I am who I am today because of you, because of your gold, because of your kindness, because of your empathy. And facing this reality that I have been denying for the past two years, this time, this year, I am acknowledging our present and bright future. This time, this year, I am saying thank you for helping me find my voice and my love of learning through the past eight years. This time, this year, I am pleading, please, please, please stay gold in your pure love for others, because our world needs it now more than ever. I'm proud of you and all of your gold, radiant light that will be walking out of this church. Keep your aura shining. Stay gold. Good morning, faculty and staff, members of the Board of Trustees, family, friends, students, and the graduating class of 2022. Today is a special day for all of us, but for us seniors, the day that we've been anticipating for what we thought would be forever has come at last. In truth, it has arrived more quickly than we ever could have imagined. But as our time here comes to an end, I am thankful that I have cherished the moments and memories made and I'm glad to be able to stand up here today to reflect on and appreciate all that I have learned from my time at Westchester. Together, we've reached a great turning point in our lives, but we did not get here alone. 
Most importantly, I could not speak today without first expressing gratitude to our teachers and families, all of whom have profoundly shaped each individual here today. Since our first days at Westchester, our teachers have helped us build up our strengths and pushed us to overcome our weaknesses. From Mr. Smith's wise advice to Mrs. Moy's meticulous but very effective lesson planning, we've all taken away both academic and life lessons from incredible teachers that will stay with us forever. Many teachers wish to make a lasting impact on each of their students, and I, along with my classmates, am confident in saying that every teacher we've had at Westchester has done exactly that. Our families as well have constantly encouraged us and provided us the support we've needed to grow and thrive. Their efforts and the opportunities they have given us do not go unnoticed, and there's nothing that could be worth more than everything they have done for us. Those I've met and grown close with during my many years at Westchester have collectively taught me the importance of the influence those around you have. For years, I've been constantly surrounded by classmates and individuals whose virtues encourage others around them to grow to be better people. They've challenged me to be greater, to work harder, and to live compassionately and generously. Their qualities have inspired me over the years. Knowing these people has truly shaped me for the better. We've been so lucky to have grown in such an uplifting environment. As we start on a new path today, may that stick with us as we continue to lift up others and leave behind a change that is remembered. Let's live in a way that brings meaning to us and those around us. There are so many more milestones that we have all yet to reach, but if they are anything like today, then we will all get there faster than ever expected. All we can do from here is take time and give meaning to that time spent. Like today, each moment is experienced only once, so be attentive. I hope we appreciate and learn from the coming triumphs and challenges. To those who have helped us along the way, we cannot thank you enough. We've had a remarkable journey towards this day, and I know our futures will be just as bright, if not brighter. Thank you so much, and congratulations again to the class of 2022. Mr. Atkinson, members of the Board of Trustees, family, friends, staff, and faculty, and the class of 2022, good morning. To my fellow graduates, I need to be honest and say that I wasn't sure where I wanted to begin. I felt a little unsure of how to offer some advice of my own when we're walking through this change together. So, I turned to Westchester's class of 2021 to share some tips on college freshman year. This is what a few of them had to say. Spend time outside. Get involved on campus early. If you don't go to class, you'll probably fail. If you don't do your work, you'll probably fail. The things that seem big are not, and the sun will still rise tomorrow. I know that many of us have been waiting for this day for a long time. But now that it's finally here, in some ways, I'm sorry to say it is. We're all so lucky to have called this school our home, with classmates that are family and teachers that are mentors. Next year, we'll have the opportunity to form our own paths and decide for ourselves what it means to be successful. I hope that when you think of your success at Westchester, you don't just think of your own accomplishments in the classroom, on the field, or on the stage. I hope that you feel proud of the relationships you've built with the people that have helped you to reach those goals. Mrs. Moy may have taught me the unit circle, but she also inspires me through the selflessness and kindness she shows to her students every day. I know Coach Schwartz loves to win, but I admire how he has taught all of us to root for our team and not against the other. Next year, you have to determine the kind of person you want to be and how you're going to work towards that. I encourage you all to reflect on your time here at Westchester 
and think about which moments have brought you the most joy and made you the most proud of yourself. Earlier this year, I was sitting in Mr. Smith's class and he shared a poem with us by Ralph Waldo Emerson that I haven't forgotten since. And for those of you who started to yawn at the word poem, try to stay with me. I'm not normally one for poetry either, but I think you might like this one. What is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Class of 2022, congratulations, and I wish you lots of joy and lots of success. Good morning, class of 2022 and our Westchester family. I am so honored to have the opportunity to speak before you all today. As an aspiring engineer, I can't help but look at Westchester through an engineering lens. It's easy to compare our school to a well-oiled machine with many parts performing many different functions. Westchester's four pillars, moral, academic, artistic, and athletic excellence, are the four components of this amazing machine. Each one of us is an important gear or piston that allows the four components to keep running. Like the engine of this machine, our school could not run without moral character. Our class honors doing the right thing and truly cares for each other. The leadership of Olivia Beaver, a student body president, contributed to where we are today. Good Citizen Award recipient Alex Hicks is always willing to do anything to help, and you'll commonly see him sacrificing his time to collect the school's recycling. Need a Band-Aid? Ask Maggie Berry. Need a pencil? Ask Maggie. Need to see a picture of a pet tarantula or lizard? Ask Maggie. She's always prepared for whatever you may need. Um, Holland Schoff brings humor to any situation, even in AP Chemistry class. And where would we be without Duncan Grimes? In his humorous way, he always gives us a dose of reality. Jonah Kashkarian and Adam El Sayed might choose to pursue careers in comedy after their elaborate birthday announcements each week, which always boosted morale. And speaking of smiles, you'll never see Jordan Bradley without one, ready to make your day brighter. Anna Sloan Culp and Ella Timberlake are kind listeners and loyal friends who really care about everyone. And what better show of moral excellence is there than Carter Scavo, who will be serving his country after attending the Naval Academy? It's clear that each one of us uses our moral energy to keep the machine in motion. The onboard computer of this machine is academic excellence, and we've all contributed to this component. We have many different academic interests and passions spurred by our own curiosity. Lulu Culler is our agriculture expert, and I love hearing about her barrel racing. Um, as a leader of the International Cultural Association this year, Priya Parikh has both a passion for learning about different cultures and, explore and sharing about her own. Is your computer acting strange? Is a teacher's smart board not working? Henry Scott is always the one, to, the one to ask, so it's no wonder he's going into computer engineering. And let's not forget aspiring author Ashley George, who I'm sure has collected lots of material hopefully all good things, for her novel during her time at Westchester. Just like the onboard of the computer sends electrical signals, we share our academic interests and discoveries with each other. It takes special talent to attain artistic excellence, the aesthetic sector of the machine, and we have many members in our class with this ability. Sadly, even with the last name Singer, I cannot sing. But Olivia Cecil and Jehan and Draw One Can, as members of the school band, no idea. They're two very talented musicians. In the famous, slightly edited words of Billy Joel, Charlotte Martin is our piano woman. It's amazing when her fingers touch the keys. George Marsh is our in-house choreographer and dance video producer. 
he had the whole upper school singing and dancing to Daft Punk's Around the World. In terms of acting, Stephen McLean, Wills Hurd, and Meredith Heron have been in practically every play and are very influential in our theater program. And Katie Todd, my Odyssey of the Mind partner since lower school, it's been fun to watch you as a trash-eating raccoon, giant bingo card, and singing beaver. Kate Dyson, our social media expert, always designs aesthetically pleasing Instagram posts. With so many talented artists, the aesthetic component of this machine is well balanced. As the transmission of the Westchester machine, our class has accelerated in terms of athletic excellence. I'm glad we can still watch Griffin Powell's impressive dunks, Ben Bublitz's quick speed, and Sidney Briggs's perfect stroke as they continue their athletic careers at the next level. We also have Grace Evans, an all-conference and all-state runner on the cross-country team, who always brought the team plenty of laughs. Lily Wilson showed us all what it looks like to never give up as a three-sport athlete after multiple leg surgeries. And I've never seen anyone more passionate about sports than Jackson Morgan. Just watch him play basketball or golf and you'll see what I mean. And none of this athletic success would be possible without good leadership. As the only senior on the team, Trey Johnson led the baseball team to the state championship game this year and was a valuable team player. Max Van Dessel was not only a great leader for the boys' soccer team, but he also assisted the girls' team to share his expertise. We even have some hidden athletic talent. As the winner of the senior faculty knockout game and half-court shot, half shot competition, Henry Erickson shocked the crowd with his secret basketball skills. As part of the transmission, each one of us is able to shift our gears perfectly so that enough power is produced, making us some pretty impressive athletes. Clearly, the class of 2022 has helped keep the Westchester machine running over the years. Thank you to our wonderful teachers and faculty members. We are so grateful for your passion for helping others. And none of us would be where we are today without our parents and family members by our side. And to my fellow class members, thank you. Thank you for many wonderful years together, sharing endless moments and caring for each other. Congratulations to the class of 2022. And now, Mrs. Briggs, it's time to award the diplomas on behalf of the Board of Trustees. Olivia Rutledge Beaver, daughter of Michael and Stephanie Beaver. I've always wanted to be a fashion model. <laughs> and what better way to start than by wearing the happy hoodie, the signature item of Olivia Beaver's original tie-dye clothing collection, memorable for its trademark smiley face graphics. Rewind to the summer of 2020, the first summer of the pandemic. While many people were wallowing in fear and anger, Olivia was focused on spreading positivity and cheer. Instead of finding the typical teen job, she followed her father's entrepreneurial footsteps and created one for herself by forming her own LLC named Live in Color. Such a clever play on words. The name of Olivia's business naturally prompts me to ask, what does it mean for a person to live in color? It means living the way Olivia does, with exuberance, laughter, and joy radiating goodness and brightening the lives of others. Being in Olivia's presence is like that moment in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy leaves Kansas and black and white transforms to vibrant technicolor. These smiley faces on her sweatshirts are not just a representation of Olivia's happy personality and optimistic mindset. They are also a representation of her effect on those around her. She makes us all smile. Living in color also means living generously, selflessly, and compassionately. And Olivia lives in these ways too, 
whether through donating a portion of her profits to combat food insecurity in High Point or in all the ways she serves and participates here at Wesley Memorial United Methodist Church. Olivia lives to humbly serve. Olivia, just like your happy hoodie, you are an original. As you spend the next four years at Carolina, keep showing kindness and doing what you can to extinguish hate. Keep staying true to who you are and how you think the world should be. Love never fails. And I will try not to take it personally if the Tar Heel mascot Ramesses replaces me as your star model. I'll be on the lookout for him next year in a happy hoodie at midcourt. Congratulations, Olivia. Margaret Ann Dongshu Berry, child of John and Amberly Berry. Hey, Mrs. Hobbs, do you think a baby qualifies as a parasite? is not a question a new mother generally expects to hear, but by the time it came from Maggie a few months ago, it seemed completely normal, and it actually did lead to an interesting science discussion. Maggie is definitely known for her curiosity and questions, which clearly span well beyond the scope of whatever courses she's in. Her passion for learning led to not only her outstanding academic performance, but to the many experiences she's had outside of class time, performing extra experiments, helping the freshmen with dissections just for fun, and using stoichiometry to answer life's mysteries about such things as communion wafers. But the question I most appreciate and the question she somehow always found the time to ask was, what can I help you with, Ms. Hobbs? I can't thank her enough for the countless hours of time she donated, willing to help with even the most mundane tasks like cleaning glassware after labs, which was honestly a lifesaver. And I know she's been an immeasurable help to many of her other teachers, our theater productions, and any friend in need. Because as you've now heard multiple times, she really does seem to have everything on hand for any possible situation. Like her iconic pants that turn into shorts, Maggie embodies the trait of versatility, or turning with ease from one thing to another. It's hard to imagine the science classrooms at Westchester without Maggie's unique blend of curiosity, intelligence, kindness, and versatility. But we all know she's going to absolutely thrive at NC State and everywhere else life takes her. Congratulations, Maggie. Jordan Alexa Bradley, child of John Bradley and Anika Goodwin. <clears throat> One of the most important parts of childhood is being given freedom by others to craft the beginnings of your voice. Jordan, that quote is by you from your essay about the memoir, Educated. And over the last four years, you have found your voice. In writing, voice means all the choices that writers make that characterize their style. And Jordan, your style or voice as a member of our school community has been highlighted and characterized by your actions. Your voice is creative as evident in the poem that you wrote for Mr. Smith's class about the Gilded Age. Your voice is conscientious and considerate. For example, Mrs. Tuggle shared with me how you helped give voice to the photos each time you offered to help your peers write captions. And Mr. Hunt says the comments that you gave your peers on their essay drafts 
are the most thorough and thoughtful examples of student feedback that he's ever seen. You helped give them voice. But most importantly, Jordan, your voice is nurturing, which is evident in the care and encouragement you showed towards your friends and classmates. Mr. Mickey recounted how he notices how often you come to check in on your friends when they are in band or helping with the plays. All of your teachers echo this sentiment. We've witnessed your uplifting nature and ability to empathize with everyone. You have an amazing heart. Your positive attitude and sincere concern provide nourishment for those around you. And I cannot think of a better voice to have. Congratulations. Sydney Lee Briggs, Sydney Lear Briggs, daughter of Dan and Laurie Briggs. There are students who successfully graduate from Westchester Country Day School. There are students who prove themselves to be the physical embodiment of all our school stands for. There are students who go above and beyond what is expected of them as a member of this community. And then there are Sydney Briggs. <laughs> Sydney Briggs, my friends. I'd be willing to bet there's not a single one among us in this room whose life has not been touched in some brilliant way by the young lady standing beside me today. I can only speak for myself, of course, but would you be surprised if I told you I had absolutely no intention or even the desire as a middle school teacher to become the faculty advisor for Upper School Debate Club? Would it surprise you to know that Sydney Briggs created Debate Club? That she petitioned me on a daily basis two years ago until I finally relented, thinking I was rather slick by saying, Sid, if you can actually find enough students interested in debating for fun and you can handle most of the duties of running the club, I'll do it. I figured that would probably be the last I'd ever hear about the club. 24 hours later, Sydney had 25 upper schoolers signed up for the club. That's one an hour. And a plan in place for how we'd go forward. She created a March Madness style debate tournament, constructed an official tournament bracket, and fired off countless text messages on a weekly basis to ensure everyone showed up at their scheduled times and the competition would go off without a hitch. She and Meredith Heron somehow found time in their overloaded schedules to entertain us with their inventive and hilarious slideshow presentations they hosted pizza parties with minute to win it style debate competitions embedded within them and even inspired some creative group members to produce hype videos for our competitions to be shared with the upper school student body. And all of this for Sydney was done for a non-academic class, a club without a grade attached. See, Sydney did all of the extra work because she knew it'd pay off for those around her, for her friends, for her classmates, and even for a certain teacher who may not have been totally sold on the idea at first, but who now cherishes all the moments and all the planning sessions they were able to share together over the past two years. That's Sydney Briggs. And I'm 100% certain stories like the one I just told about her are among the most abundant things we have on campus. And we cherish them in the same way we cherish Sydney, for her never-ending source of energy, for the compassion she shows others, for her determination, for her drive to be the best, but not at the, at the expense of her friendships. For the attention she gives to individuals when they need it most. For the guidance she provides to her siblings each and every day. For the inspiration we take from her. In many ways, Sydney Briggs is superhuman. Sometimes I expect to see her swoop down from the skies with a cape draped around her and a triangular patch on her chest. Only it wouldn't be a big red S. It would be a blue and white W, the one we've seen We've seen her all, we've all seen her wear on campus as she moves mountains and leaps the Finch Center in a single bound. The one she'll continue to wear at Wellesley for the next four years. And it occurred to me that it's fitting for Sydney, the W, possibly the most unique letter in the alphabet. The only letter stubborn enough and proud enough and brave enough that it is not even used in the spelling of its own name. The letter you absolutely need to spell important Sydney-related words like wow and wonderful 
and rowing and news writer and welcoming. And phrases like, wise beyond her years, and S. Swizzle Twizzle, that's his draft name, and we will miss you so much, and what in the world will we do without you? I don't know the answer to that last question, and if I'm truly honest, it kind of terrifies me. But I do know, and Laurie and Dan know, and Lyndon, Hadley, and Jack know this too, this world around us, the one that sometimes feels like it's falling apart, is a much better world simply because we have Sydney Briggs in it. And as long as she's willing to keep us all safe upon her shoulders like she has during her time here at Westchester, I have a lot of hope that the world of the future, the one in which Sydney Briggs is our president, will be a wondrous one indeed. And that's wondrous with a big old capital W. Wishing you the best at Wellesley in the fall. Congratulations, Sydney, and stay gold. Benjamin William Bublitz, son of Jerry and Jill Bublitz. My Ben Bublitz story. While it may sound similar to Rudy or maybe even Rocky, this story is based on the truth. It's a cold, rainy, late January night during the middle of basketball season where most just want to be at home, maybe curled up in a nice blanket with some hot cocoa. But instead, the Westchester varsity basketball team has just finished a late practice with probably a jerk coach. After a long, hard, strenuous workout, a young Ben Bublitz walks into the coach's office with his uniform bag to turn in his basketball gear and call it quits for the season. There will be merit for hanging up his shoes mid-season. Ben came to Westchester from a bigger school, had some early hurdles, finding true friends and really fitting in initially. He then battled a tough spell where his mother, his mother was in a terrible traffic accident going in and out of the hospital. Then there was this global pandemic that was taking the fun out of almost everything. Ben and his coach had a great chat that rainy night and maybe even shed some tears. They talked about his frustrations, his role, his leadership, his heart, his hard work, and a lot about life in general. Looking back, Ben may have walked into that office as a boy and walked out as a man. It sure seemed that way as his coach asked him for that uniform bag before he left. It would have taken 100 men to take that bag from Ben that night. For the rest of the season, he refound the fun that he had as a boy in the backyard and never looked back. Fast forward to spring 2022. Behind the scenes, Ben worked so hard, he sought out not only his hero, but his dad to start a journey and commitment to change his body and pursue a childhood dream of being a college athlete. Ben's work ethic and determination not only helped him change his body, but maybe his entire path. He committed everything to eating right, hitting the gym and early morning workouts arranged by Coach Anderson to become a track beast. That newfound love has now has been heading towards athletic stardom at the college level and possibly even a career in the field for the future. One of Ben's teachers quotes, Ben's engagement and determination always remained as he continued to make the best of a situation through persistence and perseverance. He challenged himself as a student, but he also bettered everyone around him. He showed concern for his classmates and worked hard, but he did not take himself too seriously and was happy to make jokes at his own expense so that others could laugh. Even on days when the material was a struggle, Ben maintained a smile and continued to put forth his best effort. Ben, we are so proud of you. I love you, buddy. Congratulations. Olivia Simone Cecil, daughter of David and Amy Cecil. (laughs) 
Olivia and I have worked together since fifth grade. And before that, I based a lot of my voice teaching on the idea that classical technique is the only healthy, flexible way to sing. I had that idea pounded into my brain growing up and through two music degrees. Although I eventually bucked that system in my own singing, it was still ingrained in my teaching of others. Olivia wasn't having it. <laughs> it wasn't that she couldn't, it was that she wouldn't. I am stubborn, but she is next level. So, we came to an interesting compromise over the years. Whenever I asked her to sing something on the classical side, Clarice would come out. <laughs> like Beyonce's Sasha Fierce, but like in the opposite direction. She created a character like she did in the shows at school because Olivia herself, singing something that didn't come from her heart and soul, felt disingenuous. Olivia's voice is so special because it's coming from all the way inside. She's a sponge, absorbing bits of everything she hears. She had a pretty firm grasp on her personal style by the age of about 12, although her voice wasn't quite ready to execute some of the ambitious ornamentation that she had in mind. For someone so outwardly rock starish and chill and cool, Olivia is really hard on herself. I used to be concerned about her harsh self-criticism because I didn't want it to take away from her joy. But being her own worst critic is what made her voice one of a kind. While I grew up thinking I had to sound a certain tried and true way to be successful, she wants her sound to be hers alone. Yeah, I helped her make those sounds in a healthy way, but she taught me to let go of control and explore the musical possibilities. Olivia, to quote your number one fan, you have made me a better teacher. I love you. Lula Grace Culler, daughter of Skip and Nicole Culler. Mark Twain once quipped that courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of it. It must have been a little frightening at first, a six-year-old girl looking up at a big pony and then looking down from it, knowing that it is in part yours now to tame and to train. Then imagine coming to know these animals so well in one way, riding and showing English style for 10 years, and then making a major switch to Western, following your heart from jumping and showing to cutting cows and barrel racing. If anyone can pull it off, it's Lulu. Not because she knows no fear, but because she faces it, works with it, tames and trains it. She has grown to be as inwardly strong and responsible as Skip and Nicole could, could hope she could be, to the point where her summer will be filled with babysitting Miss Bayless's kids and house-sitting for five dogs, I'm sorry, five horses, two dogs, two donkeys, and one pool. Lulu the Horse Whisperer, future horse trainer and YouTube influencer, is off to NC State this fall for their two-year ag program, where she'll continue to learn about how to tame and to train nature, the outside and her own. And if you go on YouTube sometime and search for equine and beauty, you will see that Lulu has already begun to master both. She'll educate you on horses and now farming, and she'll venture off into the self, showing people now, like she always has done with horses, how naturally beautiful they can be. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear Lulu sign off in a courageous way that captures her essence and trains our nature. She'll say, smile, because you all are beautiful. Yes, indeed, Lulu, you are already an excellent trainer. All the best in Raleigh, and congratulations. Anna Sloan Culp daughter of Iv and Leslie Culp. <laughs> uh. 
Like many of you, my family and I have become Rockers fans, and while I quite enjoy watching baseball, one of the most enjoyable aspects has been listening to each player's walk-up song. For those of you who aren't versed in the intricacies of baseball, a walk-up song is played when a batter walks up to the plate or a new pitcher takes the mound. It is meant to be an easy way to identify who is up to bat and usually reflects the player's personality. Anna Sloan, do you have a walk-up song to Chapel Hill? Maybe Pumping Up the Party by Miley Cyrus? <laughs> Celebration by Cool in the Gang? Hey Look Ma I Made It by Panic at the Disco? <laughs> Maybe I can help you pick one. My earliest memories of you, Anna Sloan, revolve around a dance carpool and lessons at Dance Edge, so maybe Dancing Queen by ABBA? But wait, now I'm remembering the first dance recital. You spent the duration of the number staring at the ground, not budging. <laughs> Amidst guffaws from your ever-supportive and encouraging brother, George, and mutters from your dad proclaiming, well, that was tuition money well spent. <laughs> you held your ground, standing firm in your decision not to dance and politely exited when the song was finished. So maybe you weren't a dancing queen, but you were definitely determined in your resolve to do the recital in a way that was comfortable to you. What about Queen's We Will Rock You? That could describe your soccer and cross-country prowess. I checked with Coach Anderson. He remembers the sixth grader with glasses who ran smack dab into a tree her first cross-country race but transformed into a runner who is stealth in her approach to her racing, like a panther quietly looking to overcome her enemies. He said, she never speaks about competing, but don't be fooled, she loves to win. So you definitely rocked competitors and trees on the cross country course and soccer fields, but still maybe not quite the right tune for you then. It's a little too boastful because your humility is one of your greatest attributes. How about Beyonce's independent women? When I asked your family and teachers what one word describes you best, the answer was always independent. Your determination and amazing work ethic have positioned you for acceptance at UNC Chapel Hill. Many in the audience today may incorrectly assume you are headed to UNC out of obligation. I know better. While it does give you great pride to join the tradition of your beloved grandparents, Rob, Rob, and Susu, parents, Iv and Leslie, Aunt Sue and Uncle Graham at Chapel Hill, I also know you made the choice to become a Tar Heel because it's where you feel most comfortable and where you can shine as yourself. You're an independent woman who balances academics, athletics, friendships, and even family with determination and a solid faith that allows you to live your life authentically. I think I'm coming to the realization that I cannot pick your walk-up song. That is something you will do with style, grace, and confidence. Remember to continue to face challenges and embrace new adventures your way. With grit and determination, be comfy in who you are and share that brilliance with all. Catherine Crew Dyson, daughter of Bill Dyson and Sarah Dyson. Oprah Winfrey once said, when you educate a girl, you begin to change the face of a nation. Well, I know that both the nation and the world will be better because of girls like Kate. I speak from the heart when I say that she is a bright and unbelievably kind human being who never hesitates to come to the rescue when needed. As a teacher and advisor, I have often found myself in need of support to plan organize and carry out artistic activities and cultural events 
that would never have been possible without Kate's quick thinking and thoughtful leadership. In class, she won't let a minor setback stop her from trying again with courage, wisdom, and an open mind, while also enjoying the learning process. Kate, it has truly been my honor to have had you as a student all these years and to have seen you become such an inspiring young lady. I hope you know how much I appreciate your dedication to learning Spanish and your positive outlook on life. I know in my heart that you will thrive because of your ingenuity and your resilient spirit. I want to share with you a quote from a book entitled Warrior Goddess Training by Heather Ash Amara, and it goes like this. The world needs your brand of kindness and love, your power, your creativity, and your magnificent vision. I can't wait to see the good that you are about to contribute to the world. Thank you for these last three wonderful years. Congratulations, Kate Dyson. Adam Baha El Sayed, son of Bob and Tina El Sayed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's pretty hard to follow that. I only had to spend a single day with Big A before I looked at him and said to myself, this kid's going to be somebody. I'm not sure who he'll become, but it'll be a household name, Coach Dave Carrier. The first time I met Adam El Sayed, I was supervising after school care, and I think he was in second grade, about this tall. I bet he doesn't even know we met that day, mostly because he was screaming and hiding under the tables in the computer lab. On that day, I'm not sure I was in total agreement with Coach Carrier's assessment. But I popped a few Advil and waited six more years just to be sure. <laughs> Adam's eighth grade experience, my first year back in the Westchester saddle. Adam's daily professions of true love for Ariana Grande became an unintentional feature of my classroom. He had meticulously researched everything about the pop star, down to the type of eye makeup she wore but he had no interest in reading and discussing A Midsummer Night's Dream, unless an opportunity presented itself for a bit of iambic pentameter with the word flatulence artfully woven into it. <laughs> By year's end, I may have moved a few centimeters closer to Coach Carrier's sage words, but I still wasn't sold. The wine still needed more time to age. Senior year for Adam. The fall of 2021, and college decision time is in full swing. Adam is fresh off a spring in which he cemented himself in Westchester history by running for class president with one of the most inventive, hilarious, and effective student campaigns I've seen to date. His college apps and reference letters are en route to his schools of choice before most of the nation's graduating classes finish celebrating the Labor Day holiday. His college essays are clear, clean, communicative, and authentic. He's taken to the study of Arabic to embrace his cultural identity and learn to communicate more effectively with members of his congregation. He's already earned his Eagle Scout badge and built a bench for elder members of the mosque to sit on and relax. And he's lived through a global pandemic, not one where he sat on the edge of his bed reading the alarming news headlines of the day, but one where he dove in headlong to help his parents at the family restaurant during one of the most confusing and difficult times in our history. Oh yes, my friends, Coach Carrier had been foretelling the future because Adam El Sayed has most definitely become somebody over the past four years. He's become a productive student, empathetic and selfless member of our community, a dedicated son and brother, a skilled filmmaker, and an inspiration to his past and present teachers who can look to him and remember why we keep waking up in the morning to do this job. Basically, Adam El Sayed has transformed himself into Adam El Sayed, and I couldn't be more proud of him. Wishing the best of luck to the lone senior assassin standing as he travels to UNC Wilmington in the fall. Congratulations, Adam.
Henry Tate Erickson, son of Scott Erickson and Katie Erickson. It was once said, in golf as in life, it's the follow through that makes the difference. I have known Henry Erickson for a long time, about 13 years to be exact. And what I've learned is that when Henry wants something and when Henry follows through on something, Henry Erickson is a champion in all he does. And that's why he has his very own Henry Erickson bobblehead. <laughs> Hanky would be the first to tell you I pushed him. I pushed him when others would give up on him. I pushed him when he didn't want to be pushed. And I pushed him when it was hard. Why? Because I saw early on how great Henry Erickson could be. He is unbelievably intelligent, incredibly gifted as an athlete, and a really nice person to everyone who really gets to know him. Through the years, Henry and I had some really tough conversations. But honestly, I wouldn't go back and change anything with Henry. High school is a journey, and now that Henry has pushed himself through so many tough situations, he truly is ready for the real world. A state champion soccer player, an all-conference golfer, an exceptional student athlete leader throughout our school, I couldn't be more proud of the growth of Henry Erickson over the last few years. Henry, I know you're going to do incredible things in Chapel Hill over the next four years, and you are a young man who can change the world. Just please promise me that you will always follow through on everything you do while keeping your head attached. Good luck at UNC. Go Heels. Grace Claire Evans, daughter of Rich and Marianne Evans. I introduce to you Grace Evans, Westchester's very own indie darling. The root of that endearment, of course, stems from the word independent. When I first met Grace nearly 10 years ago, everyone knew her as Josh, Alex, and Luke's little sister. However, Grace was spunky and feisty, determined to not be defined by the achievements of her three older siblings. As Grace grew, she confidently allowed her interests to guide her into the woman she is today. Just this year, Grace undertook AP Art History online on her own and completed the course strong with a 99 final average. Before this year, I hadn't taught Grace since she was a middle schooler. I was surprised to discover that Grace and I are kindred spirits. We've booked the same trips, bought the same concert tickets, helped each other discover intriguing art collections. I even had to consult with her before purchasing a pair of boots that she already owned because I didn't want her to think I was copying her. <laughs> When I wrote this tribute, I was literally listening to a Spotify playlist that Grace made and shared with me. From my perspective, Grace has grown into a sophisticated and cultivated tastemaker. A future in the creative sector in arts management couldn't be a more perfect match for this discerning young woman. Grace, you are such a cool person, and I'm so proud to have had the opportunity to work so closely with you this year. Congratulations. Ashley Nicole George, daughter of Lee and Pam George.
Ashley, I could spend this speech talking about your talent as a writer and your aspirations and dedication to pursue your dreams of becoming a published novelist. But I want to talk about and maybe remind you of another spectacular talent you possess. You are a quiet leader. In a world where it seems everyone is boasting about and broadcasting ideas and solutions, your calm, consistent approach is a welcome model. Consider how as correspondent secretary you kept the SAD club on task last year while you zoomed in to the meetings. Your follow-up emails with club minutes revealed how carefully you listened to the din of student discussion. I saw your quiet leadership at its best this year as I witnessed you lead an often roaring and vociferous creative writing club through organized writing exercises. I remember thinking, how is she going to get them to complete this activity? They're so chatty. But you did it. You did it and you did not waver in the club's agenda. And each meeting, you calmly brought the group back on task and encouraged the best from them. You affirmed their work and accepted the group for who they are giving them the space to freely express themselves while also providing structure. You are a reminder to us all, Ashley, that we should remember to never assume that loud is strong and quiet is weak. I could not be more proud of the thoughtful, confident, and supportive leader that you have become. Princeton is so lucky to have you join their student body in the fall. Congratulations. Duncan Roman Grimes, son of Matt Grimes and Julie Dixon. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout me over and pour me out. In seventh grade, Duncan and Trey decided that this was the nursery rhyme to logically rectify. I will spare you the altered verse and use the original to celebrate Duncan. Teapots, or better yet, serving tea, is considered a courteous gesture. When complimented on his manners, Duncan responded, have you met my dad? He is a walking cotillion. <laughs> In other words, manners were fully expected at all times. There have been several instances that Duncan has been the ultimate host. Mrs. Bayless recalls a day when Duncan, in full Roman attire, brought a charcuterie board to share with his art class. Duncan went into full dramatic splendor as he unpackaged the items that would soon adorn his tray. I could see from the video how much joy he brought to the class and how much he enjoyed sharing. Another line from the nursery rhyme states, when I get all steamed up, hear me shout. While on the EF China trip, Duncan was extremely upset about not being able to sample the food in the Xi'an street market. We were told it was for our own health's sake, but Duncan was willing to risk getting sick just to have the experience. Duncan, as you venture off to NC State, continue to pour out your generosity and take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime experiences. Meredith Chapman Heron, daughter of Kevin Heron and Catherine Tanner Heron. Thank you. 
If Olivia Cecil is my devilish rock star on one shoulder, Meredith Heron is the angelic soprano on the other. She's the student I aspired to be when I was growing up. Her pure, sweet voice could soar through a Mozart aria one minute, then she could flip a switch and wail a C Celine Dion power ballad with the best of them. She's unafraid to ask questions and doesn't rest until she fully understands a concept. She's unfailingly kind and patient when tutoring younger students, a skill I have yet to master. She's an actress who knows that the best performances require leaving everything on the stage and showing no fear. Someone unafraid to show their emotions and stand up for what they believe. Meredith is a rock solid friend who gives the best warm hugs. While Meredith strives for perfection, she has learned the beauty in imperfection. We have both shed tears of frustration with our singing and both have come out stronger on the other side. Most of my students know I hate the word talent. I am a firm believer that with hard work, thoughtful practice, and a dash of obsession, anyone can become great. While Meredith had a lovely voice already when she started with me in fifth grade, it was these qualities that propelled her to be the unforgettable artist she is. While her performances, singing, acting, or playing piano are the end product we all get to appreciate, it is her unmatched work ethic that will serve her in all aspects of life. We have so many stories together that couldn't possibly be summed up in 90 seconds, so I will leave you with the one phrase that encapsulates who Meredith Heron is. Peace and love. <laughs> William Carroll Heard the Fourth, son of Bill and Whitney Heard. What is the baddest dinosaur? The Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of the tyrant lizards. Wills fittingly played the part of the T-Rex in Dinosaurs Before Dark. He waited patiently backstage for his entrance, which amounted to a brief appearance on stage. Roar! Wills could easily be called the king of the stage, considering the number of shows he's participated in and the quality of his performances. In his words, I've learned to enunciate more clearly and project more loudly, to change costumes quickly and meet my cues, and to make my characters more believable. I'm often cast as characters who provide comic relief and create mischief, and I've learned to play that role well. Every rehearsal, every performance echoes the sentiment of Jack's line from A Magic Treehouse. I only know one thing for sure. That was the most fun I've ever had. Another place you have heard Wills roar is at a wildcat game. Wills has taken great pride in being Wally Wildcat, where he bounces around encouraging the crowd to cheer. His enthusiasm exudes beyond the costume, proving he is king of the mascots. Wills received the Coach's Award in tennis and swimming this year and for his dedication since sixth grade. His willingness to swim even the dreaded 500 makes him one of the baddest athletes around. Wills, Elon will offer you many new experiences in theater. Be patient and look for ways you can contribute on and off the stage. Hopefully, I will once again get the opportunity to hear you roar.
Alexander Satria Hicks, son of Douglas and Sri Hicks. Alex Hicks is truly the most single-minded person I've ever met in my life. Anyone who knows him knows exactly what I mean. To him, it is all about bass, crappy, stripers, and blue cats. Alex can catch them all, and he spends 90% of his time doing so. Huge examples, and he can tell you far more about them than even the most grizzled bait shop expert or biologist. In fact, he's just been uh, invited to help author a study for the NC Department of Fisheries on how to figure a bluegill's age. Apparently, it's all in the eyes, and it's his idea and a new one to science. Like in everything he does, Alec fishes his own way with the smallest hooks I've ever seen, with the lightest test, with cut bait for 10 pounds bass in a hurricane. Stuart Todd, a 70-year veteran of fishing, still talks about it three years later. Even with his bare hands, like with the extremely rare rainbow darter he caught and then hand-delivered, to a lab at NC State for genetic analysis. Sometimes, of course, his passion leaves him a bit uh, distracted. But whenever I had to follow up with Alex, I'd always get an immediate response. A typical one reads, was fishing, stuck on the highway, headed back from URA. I'll send a draft of the speech when I get home. But if you doubt him, inevitably a picture of a truly giant catfish, he is literally rolling into his truck bed, will follow. He did send that final draft, the morning of his speech, and it was fantastic. Alex is also one of the most industrious students I've ever known. Well, when fishing, cooking, or in service to others. From gilling chicken and chili for the whole school, or bringing five course picnics to fishing events, or running work course solo, you can always hear those boots coming to get that recycling. He gets it done, and when you need him, he's always there, outside of school or in ready to lend you a hand with an oil change or a car repair or a brand new vacuum cleaner. And like a true Southern gentleman, it's at no cost to the ladies. <laughs> so hard did he work and so well did he impress during his senior internship, he actually turned it into a legitimate job offer. One is a wildlife biologist for the state of North Carolina Department of Fisheries. And this is a role I know he would excel. If you get the chance, ask him to tell you about the whole experience. It was flat out the most impressive capstone internship about which I've ever heard. The guy even got his scuba dive license for free so they could use it more effectively for just a week. These last four years, I was finally a guy that knew a guy for everything. And his name was Alex Hicks. <laughs> Whether you take that job as a wildlife biologist or whatever lays ahead for you, I know that hard work, service to others, and lots and lots of fishing will be in your future. Congratulations. Jehan Anindia and Drawan, daughter of Eric Fawcett and Rini Hosby. Jehan is such a treasure and is by far one of the most unique students I have taught in my decade of working as an educator. She joined our school community in the middle of the tumultuous 2020-2021 school year, coming to us from Singapore and before that Indonesia. At present, you'd never know that Jehan has been a Westchester student for less than two years. She is adored by her peers and has the most contagious smile. Humble and unassuming, you'd never guess that just last night she was killing it as she performed a cover of Florence and the Machines' Dog Days Are Over with her band No Idea. 
Jehan has the voice of an angel, and I had never heard her sing in a chorus before until yesterday. I was blown away. Jehan's modesty continues to deceive me as she just steps back and does her thing, and I'm constantly reminded of her vast and varied talents. Beyond her musical talents, Jehan will be continuing her education this fall at NC State's highly selective design program to pursue a degree in industrial design. In order to prepare for her design application, Jehan diligently and meticulously built an art portfolio of over 10 completed works in just three months that displayed her interest in product design and her keen sense of craftsmanship. As I got to know Jehan more and more over the course of this year, my admiration for her grew. Selfishly, I wish that she had joined our Westchester family earlier so that I could have had more time to enjoy such a gifted student. Jehan, it's been a privilege to serve as your art instructor, even if it was only for a short while. Best wishes and congratulations on all of your achievements. Johnny Richard Johnson III, son of Rick and Christine Johnson. Best-selling author Haruki Murakami once wrote that he can, quote, bear any pain as long as it has meaning. Westchester class of 22 resident philosopher Trey Johnson recently told me, quote, you should find something in your life that caused you pain and keep that pain in your mind as you build a better version of yourself. Got to fit. <laughs> it's not surprising when you come across a sterling example of two great minds thinking alike, especially when one of those minds when, both, when those minds happen to rest atop shoulders as strong and resilient as Mr. Murakami, and of course our own beloved Mr. Johnson. Trey, the young man with the ever-present sly smile on his face and a hilarious one-liner tucked just behind his lips and ready for action at a moment's notice. A seemingly carefree spirit whom I fully expect to jump straight out of his robes the second this ceremony ends, rev up his four-wheeler before bursting through those massive wooden doors over yonder into the sunset like a legend. Your doctor probably wouldn't agree with that, but we're here for it. <laughs> but in reality, that's not the only Trey I know. The other Trey I know feels things. He knows pain. He understands how when you lose someone who means the world to you, like Trey's grandpa did, the first thing you do is stand up and stare at yourself in the mirror for a good long while. And you let the pain sink in until it feels like you might give up. And you ask the image in the mirror if he's become the version of himself the missing loved one would have wanted him to be. You don't give up, because giving up is not part of your vocabulary anymore. Instead, you get into the weight room five or six times a week and completely tra transform yourself to perform at top level on the diamond, the baseball diamond, sport you could always share with the grandpa who meant so much to you. And even when you're, you're not sure, you, you even want to continue stepping out on the field day after day to run poles and do tee work and shag fly balls, you do it anyway because the version of yourself you wanted to be is completely in sight now. And you look in the mirror one day, one day a year later, and you see what your grandfather had seen all along. You see Trey Johnson. The Trey Johnson who taught himself what Helen Keller tried to teach the world in her lifetime, that although the world is full of suffering, it is full also of the overcoming of it. So keep on warming up for classes with your traditional sets of squat thrusts. Yeah, you didn't, I didn't forget about that because they might remind you how important it is to feel the pain right before you, in your words, absolutely grind right through it. I know you'll keep overcoming any obstacle that lands in your path at App State and beyond, and I know you'll continue to keep perfecting that version of yourself you want to be able to see through your grandpa's eyes. Trust me, he's seeing it right now. Congratulations, Trey.
Jonah Michael Kashkarian, son of Michael and Lisa Kashkarian. Being a brother can be difficult. Just ask Remus or Abel. But brotherhood can also be as uplifting and supportive a thing as life can offer to another person or a community. Take Jonah Keshgarian, for example. When I first got to know the youngest Keshgarian brother, he was helping to deliver eggs with his oldest brother, Noah, as part of J&J Eggs business. I never knew if that was Jacob, Noah, Jonah, or Jonah, Noah, Jacob. Regardless, Jonah was in elementary school then, already playing his part as a contributing brother. While in middle school, Jonah could be spotted exploring the neighborhood for Pokemon with big brother Jacob driving him around. You see, brotherhood can allow for work, adventure, and for fun together. Once in high school, Jonah mastered the art of being there for his community, offering us weekly laughs as a birthday brother for our upper school meetings. And if you want to know how his peers feel about him, he was voted homecoming king this past winter and prom king just over a month ago. Jonah has a giving inner confidence and a caring heart. He may even show up with a buddy at your daughter's birthday party with a Tickle Me Elmo gift, and then drop off a card for the other daughter's birthday to make sure things are fair and equal. All things may not seem equal in this world, but showing up for people and being there for them, making them laugh, and making their lives better, these are good things. And this is Jonah Keshgarian. He's been a good brother to Westchester, his family, and his community. He will continue to bless those around him as we have been blessed by him. May the blessings be yours, Jonah. We few we happy few, we band of brothers. All the best at NC State, and congratulations. George Alexander Marsh, son of Ken and Khaki Marsh. George Marsh is a sleeping giant. Now, I've only coached him on the varsity soccer and golf teams this year, but I have actually known this for years. You see, George and I used to dominate the balloon and egg toss at our annual Wellington Street block party 14 years ago, and I learned way back then that he had hands as soft as pillows. So I knew early on that he was going to be a great goalie and short game magician whenever my time to coach him would come. Thankfully, you made it back to us for your senior year. George, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone in this room today. We are all so glad that you came back to Westchester for your senior year. Your easygoing demeanor to go along with your positive disposition have made the class of 2022 even stronger. However, what I really want to share today are three things that I learned about George over the last 10 months together. Number one, this dude can fall asleep on a bus ride in about three minutes. Before I even turn onto Hornytown Road, I look back and Marshy is catching flies. It really doesn't take George long to get relaxed. Number two, George's love for his family is deep, and he especially loves his time with his grandfather fly fishing. And number three, George Marsh is an incredible teammate. His peers love him, and the underclassmen look up to him like he is a gentle giant. So I'll leave you with this today, George. As you head down to Wilmington to be a Seahawk in the fall, you, my friend, are a sleeping giant. Your potential is like a river of fish that has never been occupied by the greatest fly fishermen in the world. Don't ever forget where you came from, how you got here, and please, please make sure you set at least three alarm clocks each morning so you make it to class on time. Good luck at UNCW. <laughs>
Charlotte Ann Martin, daughter of Scott and Trang Martin. So did you know that if you Google what makes a great pianist, the first result is Charlotte Martin. The search results don't actually say Charlotte Martin, but they might as well. The results say excellent work ethic, attention to detail, diligence, commitment, eagerness to learn, willingness to practice, dedication. Those seven traits are your top qualities, Charlotte. You keep up with a rigorous academic schedule and piano practice. You tutor a lower school student, work a part-time job, and all keep, while keeping a positive attitude. One would think that such a busy schedule would mean that details slip and commitments would fall through, but that is not the case. You took on extra responsibility without hesitation just last month when Mrs. Christensen and I needed an extra helper for the running club. One might also think that such a busy schedule would mean your joy for learning might wane, but again, that is not the case. I think about your senior speech and how not only was the speech impeccably researched and well-written, but your delivery was fresh, engaged, and full of the passion it is evident you have. So yes, you are an excellent pianist, but you are also a wonderfully well-rounded, dedicated student, friend, daughter, and sister. Charlotte, you our excellence. Stephen Andrew McLean, son of Ward and Kelly McLean. I am dependable. I am a rock. I'm a constant source of reassurance, be it with advice or laughter. This was Stephen's response when asked, how do you think others would describe you? I couldn't agree more. Stephen is one of the most dependable individuals I know. When cast in a show, assisting at summer camp, or completing assignments for class, Stephen was rock solid. On our NC Adventure Camp, I saw Stephen as a constant source of reliability and reassurance for our younger campers. He made sure that they had what they needed, kept them within sight, and reassuringly addressed their anxieties. It's no secret that I've cast Stephen in dad roles over the years, probably because of his stature and no-nonsense personality. When auditioning for The Little Mermaid, Stephen had three roles in mind. One, King Triton, the most obvious, the biggest dad in the biggest show of the year. Two, Scuttle. He admitted, while I'm not terribly used to comic relief, I'm not terribly unused to comic relief. So it would be fun, you know, a little change of pace and allow someone else to be a dad for once. And three, Ursula. <laughs> that is, if I would be willing to disregard literally all common sense, then it would be very fun, and, but a very bad idea. Stephen, I'm so glad I cast you a scuttle. It let your humorous side shine and brought much laughter to our audiences. As you venture off to Furman University, continue to be dependable, a constant source of reassurance be it with advice or laughter, and you will be solid as a rock.
Jackson Ryan Morgan, son of Darren Morgan and Joelle Morgan. Jackson might not remember, but he and I officially started Westchester at the same time. Jackson started as a new sixth grade student and I started as the new middle school basketball coach. At that time, there were three different Jacksons on our team, so this Jackson affectionately became Morgie from that day forward. There are many words that describe Morgie that include friendly, hardworking, considerate, loyal, athletic, persevering, engaging, and definitely smart as a National Honor Society member. But like the coach I am, the word I like to use in the most sincere and positive way possible is that Morgie is a dog. <laughs> in sports, you hear people talk about needing that dog on their team, the guy who will go out there and do whatever it takes. Well, Morgie was our dog. He is the guy who would go out, guard the best player, or play against the opposing team's best golfer without blinking an eye. Granted, there were times when we had to reel Morgie back in. To be honest, there were a lot of those times. <laughs> but Jackson's competitive perseverance was something we could not teach. I had to beg Morgie while he kicked and screamed the whole way not to play most of his senior season because he had a broken back. But there aren't too many athletes or dogs for that matter that want to play with a broken back. If you drive by Willow Creek's golf practice facility daily as I do, you're sure, you're sure to see Morgie Hart at work. He is a great golfer. As a six-year member of the varsity golf team, Morgie has a, was a two-time All-State and All-Conference member and finished as the state runner-up last year and a top 10 finisher this year. That effort generally speaks to his dogged work ethic. Miss Atkinson recently said about Jackson, it is hard to be in Jackson's presence without smiling. He is a young man who positively radiates goodwill. Jackson is a people person and has probably never met a stranger. Ms. Brinson followed up by saying, the development I've seen in Jackson stands out among all other students I have ever taught. I feel so proud of him and my heart smiles each time I encounter him. In a recent conversation I had with Morgie, he was worried and vulnerable about leaving Westchester and going to NC State next year leaving his community, leaving his friends, his family, leaving the everyday familiar faces. But Morgie, if you continue to grow and make the great st strides you made here at Westchester, I can't wait to see your success in the future. Morgie, we're so proud of you. I love you, buddy, and congratulations. Priya Sachin Parik, daughter of Sachin and Suchi Parik. Holy, H O L I is a Hindu festival celebrated each spring, honoring new season, the new life, light, and love. Priya introduced me to Holi during one of our conversations. Priya is the type of student that comes early and stays late so as to converse, relate, and ask questions. But here's the thing with Priya. She genuinely listens to your response. She listens and she shares of herself because she cares. She cares about her family, her culture, her learning, and if you talk with her, you'll find out she cares about yours too. As a four-year member of the International Cultural Association Club and co-president this year, she helped bring back the International Cultural Fair, a highlight of the year for many. She founded the Badminton Club for Upper School and was in multiple performances on our stage. When Mrs. Singer recognized Priya for winning the departmental plaque this year as the top student in social studies, she described Priya as 
kind, reserved yet passionate, extremely insightful, and honestly, one of the most delightful students I have taught. I wholeheartedly agree. It is most fitting that Priya will be studying psychology this fall at UNC. I've told her to keep in touch, but I know I will have a yearly reminder because somehow my iPhone knew this past March 18th that it was holy, H-O-L-I. I had just learned of holy that morning from Priya and my phone already knew, and now I will forever know because one who cares related it to me. Keep caring, Priya. The psychology department at Chapel Hill has a new gift of a student, and she has a happy, holy soul. Griffin Colin Powell, son of Colin and Robin Powell. I would see Griffin most days and greet him with the usual, what's up G? Almost all the time, Griffin would respond, what's good, coach? Every time he responded with that phrase, what's good, it would catch me off guard. It always threw me and made me pause because it was literally, literally a positive and sincere response, but one I never answered. Well, today, Griffin, I'd like to try to answer your question of what's good. What's good, G, were our everyday talks. You would always find time to come by the office just to shoot the breeze, talking a lot about basketball and sometimes a little about life and your dreams. I sure learned a lot and will miss that. What's good, G, was your growth. You came to Westchester somewhat timid and over time you found your voice. You had to work at it but became a team leader by example because you are so unselfish and always put the team first. What's good, G, are the relationships you've made. Word on the street is that your nickname on campus is BFG. BFG stands for Big Friendly Griff, which pretty much speaks for itself. What's good, G, is that you are an exceptional student and will graduate with a four plus GPA and National Honor Society accolades. What's good, G, is the influence and legacy you have had and made for the younger kids at school. Why you have, why you have skipped a class or 10 hanging out in the gym you were always a celebrity for all the lower school kids who looked up to you. What's good, G, is that you're a phenomenal basketball player. As your mom says, your follow-through as a six-year-old was one of the prettiest I've ever seen. It not only helped lead our team, but your individual successes to an all-conference and all-triad area honors after scoring a thousand plus points for your career. The coolest part of that is you never talk about it or boast about it. What's good, G, is that you have the opportunity to follow your childhood dreams to play college basketball. I know how special that is for you. What's best though, G, and I emphasize best over good, is that while you are a great ball player, you are an even better young man. When all the honors and accolades fade, you have a true heart which will carry you forever. Griffin, we are so proud of you. I love you, buddy. Congratulations. Carter William Scavo, son of Billy and Amber Scavo. Drop and give me 20. To most kids, when you tell them that, they look at you cross-eyed or try and give you 20 bucks. To Carter Popeye Scavo, he immediately goes down and will pump out 20 plus an extra 10 of the best push-ups you have ever seen. You see, Carter is one of a kind, intense, competitive, a hyper-focused scholar-athlete, yet his moral compass 
is as lined with anyone I've ever met as an 18-year-old. Simply, we want folks like Carter Scavo protecting our great country. Within the U.S. Navy, the principles of honor, courage, and commitment are the faithful core values that guide every member of the Naval Service. And I got to witness this firsthand from the beginning of my time with Carter last fall when he first came out for the varsity soccer team. And his honor, courage, and commitment to his teammates was respected from day one. This kid won't back down from anyone and cherish his competition and what an honor he was to coach. A true leader in every sense of the word. I've also learned that Carter is an incredible soccer referee and I often found myself asking him to clarify a new rule change for me throughout the season. Carter's love of history and military values were instilled at an early age from his grandfather, a Korean Marine Corps officer and U.S. Naval Academy alum. Carter comes from it honestly, and I know your grandfather and family are so proud of you today. We all know you can accomplish your dream of becoming a Marine Raider. And Carter, as you leave Little Old Westchester for Annapolis, Maryland this summer, don't ever change who you are and what you stand for, but please make sure you take this can of greens with you just in case you need it. And to quote the one and only, as you trace your dreams, I'm strong to the finish because I eats me spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Congrats. <laughs> James Henry Scott, son of Jake and Carrie Beth Scott. The first time Henry asked me a question about a problem in AP chemistry last year, once I had just returned from maternity leave, I walked up and saw that he hadn't really written any work down for the problem on his paper. So I have to admit, I thought, oh boy, here we go. He has no idea what he's doing. Only to be proven immediately wrong, as he verbally walked me through the thought process that most students would have written lines of work to reach. I've since learned that Henry truly has one of the best sense of numbers I've ever encountered. The hardest part about AP Chem is usually figuring out where to start, how to approach the problem. But for Henry, this was never an issue. He would read the problem and then just jump in full speed ahead with the pathway to the solution seemingly instantaneously there in his head. Needless to say, he wasn't a fan of the required work he had to show for AP graders, much preferring to solve things in his own way. His, I'll say, persistence rather than stubbornness, to stick to his instincts and see them through to the end, is the type of drive that leads engineers to their most groundbreaking creations. I've always been fascinated by nuclear fusion. I mean, it's literally the power of the stars. So I was thrilled when Henry chose to focus on nuclear reactions and energy for his capstone this year. What impressed me more than anything about it was the fact that he was able to explain those concepts in a way that everyone, from the faculty to the freshmen, could actually understand. That is not easy to do. And that's what the world really needs right now, not just the advancement of science, but the education of the public about that science. This effective communication, paired with Henry's intelligence and perseverance, yields the true potential to combat global issues in science and make the world a better place. All the best and congrats, Henry. James Holland Schoff, son of Reynolds Schoff and Catherine Schoff.
The first of the many surprises I got from Holland in chemistry was during my explanation of water conducting electricity and why it does so, when he raised his hand and asked, oh, is this about how 100% H2O actually wouldn't conduct any electricity? I was honestly floored by this question because no other student has ever known this before. When I asked him, where on earth did you learn that? His response was, oh, it's in this anime I'm watching. And thus, anime and chemistry became the first example of the many surprising combinations that Holland has a knack for finding and creating. Besides anime and chemistry, there's been the 12 Days of Christmas and Gravimetric Analysis Labs, Leo the Lion and my clock, and the sticky green man and my ceiling, who, defying all laws of gravity, has actually been hanging on by one foot since the first week of school and appears to now be a permanent fixture in my classroom. Many might even say that AP Chem and Holland are not two things that they would have expected to see come together. But I'm so glad that he decided to challenge himself with this course. And like our sticky man, he stuck it out through all the challenges. Because Holland is more than this hodgepodge of unexpected combinations. He's bright, creative, and once he's decided to reach a goal, he's going to meet it no matter what. I'm so grateful for his inf infectious, upbeat attitude that kept us going even when things were tough. He kept us all smiling, laughing, and embracing the unexpected when we truly needed it most. And I know he does the same for his friends, teammates, and family. Holland is a person who's not only unafraid to step out of his comfort zone, he literally embraces it. So as much as I will miss him, I'm so proud of him and so excited for him to make the most of all the opportunities, surprises, and unexpected combinations ahead. Congrats, Holland. Sophia Ann Singer, daughter of Eric and Heather Singer. Dora the Explorer, the goth version, a fast-talking museum curator, an inquisitive duck reporter interviewing farm animals for a reality show, and a tech-savvy young granddaughter. These are just a few of the memorable characters Sophia Singer has portrayed during her 12 years as an Odyssey of the Mind participant. As different as these roles may seem, they share a common theme. They are all characters who have spunk intelligence and drive, who are catalysts for everything and everyone around them. Hmm, does that remind you of anyone in particular? And her final year in Odyssey was no different. Sophia performed the part of a perky, overachieving Girl Scout who creates a de-goo cookie creator innator, basically a machine that can do everything at once and package it very appealingly. It's an invention that I think represents Sophia to a T, for there's no doubt she's a young woman who can do it all. Her unwavering determination has resulted in an impressive list of individual accomplishments. But what's really wonderful about Sophia is how she channels her trademark can-do attitude for the collective good. Sophia's time at Westchester is full of we-can-do-it moments in Odyssey, in cheerleading, in cross country and track, in promoting mental health awareness, and women in engineering. Over the years, Sophia has said to me countless times, we got this, Miss Atkinson. And every time I was comforted. So I think I have decided on yet another role for Sophia. Behold, the 21st century Rosie the Riveter.
right. Sophia, you may not have the biceps of the World War II era bandana wearing Rosie, but you definitely have the potential to be just as impactful and iconic as she was. I am confident that at Duke and beyond, you will inspire others to achieve great things alongside you as you cheer them on. Congratulations, Sophia. Ella Catherine Timberlake, daughter of Daniel and Ashley Timberlake. Ernest Hemingway said, there is no friend as loyal as a book. And although I am an English teacher, I disagree with Hemingway because I argue there is no friend as loyal as Ella Timberlake. Ella, you are steadfast and conscientious. You have an impeccable sense of integrity, and you are the paragon for the adage, character is what you do when no one else is looking. So when it may have appeared that no one else was looking, your Westchester community noticed the dedication you showed to our little wildcats, painting faces at almost every blue-white day or arts fest. We've noticed the times you've spent helping teachers around campus, such as helping Mrs. Sloop with her blinds or sorting books. And we've noticed your unwavering support of your friends and classmates at sporting events and club meetings. Your character has been evident in every aspect of your life at Westchester, and you demonstrate this without any pomp or circumstance. You do the right thing and help because of your loyalty, not because of a desire for credit. To quote your fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Sloop, you have blossomed into an accomplished, principled, poised upper schooler. I cannot think of a more loyal friend to our school or a more admirable role model for our students. And there is an incoming freshman class at Chapel Hill looking forward to meeting the true and loyal friend that is you. Congratulations, Ella. <laughs> Catherine May Todd, daughter of Mel and Jerry Todd. Rizzo in Greece, Cruella de Vil in 101 Dalmatians, Ursula in The Little Mermaid. How did someone as kind and thoughtful as Katie Todd end up playing so many villains? Big-hearted Katie would have outfitted Sandy in the leather pants at the slumber party, would have worn only imitation fur, and would have given Ariel legs without asking for her voice. Perhaps Katie was the perfect choice for these roles, not just because of her amazing singing voice and stellar acting skills, but because all three of these memorable characters are strong women. Women who, like Katie, know their minds, possess confidence, and have presence. And actually, there is one line that Ursula sings that I think really applies to Katie. And I fortunately know a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. Yes, Katie is full of magic. She is magical for her modesty, for her gentleness, for her wonderful playfulness and clever sense of humor. And Katie is magical in the way that she thinks, contemplates, and absorbs. I admire how deliberate she is. Katie never rushes. 
She takes the time to muse and really listen before responding. In my mind's eye, I will always see her with her head cocked slightly to the side as she considers a new word, a new idea, a new perspective. Curious to her core, and not surprisingly a lover of podcasts, Katie has all the qualities of a true scholar. I expect to watch a TED Talk by her one day. And there's no question that Katie has been magical as a 12-year Odyssey of the Mind participant. Odyssey has allowed all of Katie's bewitching charms to cohere in one place. Her intellectual powers, wit, creativity, vocal and artistic talents, collaborative nature, and meticulous attention to detail. Katie, I hope you will always remember how magical you are. I'll always be under your spell. Congratulations, Katie. Maximilian William Christopher Van Dessel, son of Tom and Kim Van Dessel. The lucky state championship whistle. A lot of people talk about legacy. A few people actually live it. In my 22 years at Westchester, I can't think of anyone who has maximized their opportunity to leave a legacy more than Max Little Diesel Van Dessel. From a short, chubby, scared of soccer camp little fella to an all-conference, all-state, all-region, as respected state champion captain I have ever coached, Max Van Dessel earned everything he accomplished during his time at Westchester, and in the process has left a legacy at our great school for many years to come. From introducing Wally's kids, where a lower school soccer fan got to spend an evening on the bench for a big game and was always greeted with a hug and a t-shirt from Max, to kick arounds where Max always welcomed the younger players with open arms, to personally strength training younger Wildcats in his free time at his home. Nobody has more pride and love for Westchester and our soccer program than Max. But above all the greatness I've witnessed on and off the soccer field, the greatest legacy I've witnessed is your love for your two brothers, Ben and Sam. Your passion to be an incredible son to your mom and dad, as well as being a special grandson. You always put your family first and never looked for individual glory. It just happened to find you. And that's what the great ones do. Thanks. Max, as you graduate WCDS today and leave this special pack of cats to join a new pack of wolves, don't ever forget what made you great. And please don't ever lose your passion for being humble and kind to all. And please don't ever lose that smile and love for all. You 100% left the program better than you found it. Now it's time to show the world who Max Van Dessel is, and I can't wait to watch you flex that muscle and maximize all the strength and honor you have been building for years. Congrats, little Diesel. Now go ETT and save this whistle. One day you will need it, coach. Congrats. Lily Mae Wilson, daughter of Alan and Nicole Andrews and Scott and Jamie Wilson.
Well, Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Lily was 14, coming off her second surgery, having rods put in her legs. Fast forward four years, she's walking to get her MVP award in basketball. She has a smile on her face, but it's only half as big as the smile she'll have minutes later. That's when her brother gets his award. This sums up Lily Wilson. Her academics never wavered, her attitude never faltered, and her leadership only blossomed. She knows the value of an education, the importance of lessons learned through athletics, but her special gift is understanding, loving, and helping others. She's won numerous awards, and there's so many wonderful characteristics to speak on. Words wouldn't do her justice, so I wrote this small verse for her. And you know to play it in front of this group of people, she must be a pretty special girl. Lily, I'd only do this for you. <laughs> well, she's a rock star without a guitar. She's a wild cat down deep in her heart. A little bit feisty and a whole lot of love. She gets Bieber fever. We all stand and we shrug. <laughs> On to the next chapter in a blink of an eye. We're sure going to miss you, girl. I'm not going to lie. She gonna lead the pack and then make her mark in this world But to those that love her most She'll always be there, little girl We love you, Lily Will the graduates please stand? And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to give you the Westchester Country Day School Class of 2022. stand. Let us go forth from this place of celebration with that which we have been blessed, a community, an education, and a future, knowing that what we have already accomplished is a testament to our abilities and potential. These abilities will continue to grow as we enter a time of new opportunities, people, and places beyond this school that we have for so long called home. And remembering what has been given to us, it will soon be our responsibility to give back. In all that comes next, may we find happiness, growth, and fulfillment. Congratulations to all.
Circle the umbrella.